Hey, guys, gals, and non-binary pals. It's Orion Hart. And recently, I participated in the massive 48-hour GMTK Game Jam. Over 20,000 people signed up, and over 6,000 submissions were received by the end. For those of you not in the loop, a game jam is basically a contest where game developers try to finish a game within a given time limit, usually creating all or most of the assets within the time period and designing within a theme. This year's theme was Roll of the Dice. Now, I've been a massive fan of GMTK for ages. I've used their videos in my classes, I watched them for fun, and I watched them for education. So the very first thing we did was open up a document and brainstorm ideas. When I do a jam like this, I try to spend the first hour writing every idea I can into a document. Then myself and my teammates assign an interest and a viability score to each of them. How much interest do we personally have in the idea and how realistic is it to complete within the time frame? Overscoping is a very real thing, even outside of game jams. Sometimes the signposts keep moving as you develop and come up with new ideas. So for a 48 hour game jam, we really had to think small. The second hurdle was the theme, roll of the dice. Now, RNG scares me. I'm not scared of numbers or randomness exactly, just the idea that developing a game centered around randomness can create a lot of feels bad moments for players, which doesn't lead to great game design or gameplay. So my first thoughts were how do we control the randomness of player experiences and what exactly is a die? Does a roll of the dice have to be what we traditionally think of or can we go more conceptual? After JW and I struggled for hours on which idea to pick, we ended up going with a drafting game. You would be presented with randomized dice, random I know, don't worry, and would have to take turns choosing dice against an AI to add to your dice pool. Since the dice were random, you'd be allowed to inspect them and choose the dice that gave you the highest probability outcome of rolling the symbols you wanted. This was pretty much all we had at this point in terms of design. As the programmer, I wanted to get started as soon as possible getting something into the engine and hoped that maybe the idea would crystallize as I worked. And thankfully, with the addition of our second artist, things started coming into form. The symbols you rolled from the dice would become a resource you spent to purchase cards. Originally, the dice just had generic symbols on them, swords, shields, fantasy stuff, but thanks to some innocuous comments, we chose something a bit more sinister. Thus, Cursed Dice was born. The dice faces would be concepts of flesh and soul, the dice themselves physical manifestation of the poor folks trapped within the two witches' grimoires. Capture of not souls from the opposing witches' grimoire, and the soul itself would be claimed. Spooky, no? Wait till you see the dice. JW conceptualized the dice face, and Scroblin started modeling them. Trust me, they're worth the wait. Now with the idea, we'd created what equated to a tabletop board game. The game began with a flip of the river, a term borrowed from poker, showing you and the opponent the three souls chosen to be played for that round. A soul would have a soul value, the points it was worth, and a cost. The cost would include any number of any variety of the seven symbols. Skin, mouth, heart, mind, limb, eye, and skull. Development went smoothly. We were confident we were going to finish on time. Well, I was. I'd figured out what I needed to do, and finishing it was just pushing through, but... Not having developed in a few months was taking its toll on me. I took a few too many breaks and left very little room for polish at the end. I programmed systems, assembled scenes, and tried to get everything my artists were sending me into the engine, all the while designing, balancing, and programming the game. Folks, I'm not Superman. It's hard to be a designer, programmer, and project coordinator all within 48 hours while trying to put out a product before the final hour. Time ticked down, and our musician Flip Luca dropped in with some hot tracks, spooky tunes you're listening to right now, along with some sounds he generated and compiled. With not much time left, I was only able to get some of those in. I hastily tried to generate a tutorial, and given a bit more time, I might have been able to streamline the onboarding process for new players. My best note to you is to leave enough time with your design to integrate your tutorial in the gameplay. One of the biggest notes I've gotten from jams before was that our more complex game design concepts weren't communicated well enough to the players. A good tutorial shouldn't be walls of text stumps, but instead play out like a slice of your game should. That reminds me, I never told you how you win. Within each player's deck, there exists a soul. The soul costs quite a few resources to claim. Claim your opponent's soul, and you win. To help you accomplish this momentous task, we allow you to store a die for next round. See so if you get 100 soul points from claiming cards, you're guaranteed to see your opponent's soul in the next river. The idea is that once you know your opponent's soul cost, 
and you've hit 100 souls, you can start saving dice each round with the highest chance of helping you roll that number, the controlled random that we were talking about. It might be a bit convoluted, but it's what we came up with. Scroblin was fading. He'd been up for over 18 hours modeling these dice, and when he sent them to me, I was blown away. I put them into the engine and... Wow, these things are gruesome. Looking at these close up, I knew that even if my programming came up short, we'd have something awesome to show people. Not to mention the amazing cards JW had finished drawing. With the addition of the animated grimoire set piece, and as we approached that final hour, some things had to give. I encountered some bugs in the spaghetti code I'd been cooking for those 18 hours and had to make some concessions to put out a functional game. Instead of the AI I'd written for purchasing cards, the enemy would just always purchase one. A temporary fix I intend to change with the post-jam update. And also, we didn't realize it until after uploading, but you can spend more money than you have. I trust you guys to be honest players, so let's chalk that one up to player choice. And that's Cursed Dice. The demo we released for the game jam is functional, if a bit less than we'd anticipated. At the very least, it's impressive to look at and doesn't balk at multiple playthroughs or rounds. The core of the game is there and I'm proud of what each of us was able to make within the boundaries of the theme and the time frame. A special thanks to each of my team members. Your boy Scroblin, JW for their amazing art, Flip Luca for his awesome sound and music, and an honorable mention to my buddy Alpha Zeba, who hopped in to be my rubber duck for a few complicated coding problems I encountered. We all need a buddy to bounce ideas off of. And of course, thanks to Mark and the GMTK Jam. You provided a great escape this weekend, and we thank you for it. Until next time. Oh, and by the way, I have streamed all of this over at twitch.tv slash Orionheart. Anytime I'm doing a game jam or game design, you can hop on over and check it out. I'm also working on a game called Smank. It's a 3D isometric puzzle game, and we're hoping to have a demo ready beyond the one that's already up on my itch in the description by this fall. Check it out.